Man, look in here. What's up? Welcome. I think uh, we got folks in here. How's everybody doing? Let's work again. It's another night and we get to do it. We might as well work, right? No need in playing with it. See if we can get in focus here. Okay, that's uh, it's about as focused as it needs to get. Yeah, there you go. Good evening, good evening, everybody. Let me um, get going and start pulling this stuff up so we can see what we got. Uh, let's close this. The remains. Da -da. Are you all excited to be here? Y'all can unmute your mic. We family, you know, oh, come on and unmute. Yes. All right. Having a good day. Everybody's okay. Yes. Man, I'm really excited about today. Like, super duper. Like, I'm very, very excited about today. This is a good day. What we're going to talk about today, it matters a lot. Um, let me see here if I can check the email and pull up lay notes. Because, you know, you just can't be making it up as you go. You got to kind of, like, do your research, have some notes, that sort of thing. Don't y'all hate when people try and teach you, but they haven't studied anything in order to do it? I hate that. Like one of my pet peeves. Like, oh, why are you trying to teach me something? And you have no notes. Uh, here and here. There it is. There's a presentation. Uh, time is 8.01. We're going to start. Um, at 8.03, we typically start about three minutes after. And then tonight I have to, I didn't even let the Instagram people know, the other social medias, you know. Uh, do me a favor, everybody. If you had a good time yesterday, just be like, yo, I had a good time. I unmute your mic and say, yeah, I enjoyed yesterday's lecture. It was good to me or I learned something good. Come on, tell me what you, well, how did it go? Really, really enjoyed it. I learned something good, yes. Okay, okay. Okay, what's your it name? It was good, Where Jay. Okay, okay. What's your name? Where you from? Tina Brown, Florence, South Carolina. I like that. I like that. Big shout out to Tina. I appreciate that. Today is going to be um, really like the presentation of uh, methodology. And it's like really traitorish type of stuff. So yesterday was a lot of, I guess, psychological and emotional stuff. Um, but today is more like chart stuff, okay? Is that cool? Can we get into like the charts and kind of geek out a little bit on the chart stuff? Yes, please. Yes, that'll be great. <laughs> okay, we're, we're gonna kind of get out and kind of geek out on chart stuff. And allow for interaction. Today might be a little bit longer just because of the interaction factor. Um, but that's about it. Let me pull this up. Minimize these windows. Erica, what's up? I see you. Earrings in, riding. I see you. Big dog in the set. Good to see. Um, let me get this pulled up. Man, this is day two of a whole series I'm super excited about. And now let's let the Instagram people come in. Okay, cool. So we do this and we press the plus sign and we press live and then we uh, add a filter. No, 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 no filter. Uh, we'll just go live. And then uh, we'll say, uh, yep, I'm now live. And then we'll say, day two of the June teaching series. And today is how to actually trade. Oh yeah, I don't need any uh, alarm about it. What's up everybody, y'all joining me? Uh, we're going to uh, be on the charts at the same time. So if you're on Instagram, <laughs> You know, like <clears throat> you're going to get a piece of the lecture, but you're not going to get it all. If you want to see everything, please go to uh, the link in my bio and join. Maybe I should like put that, uh, the link in the bio. What up, Malik? Let me see if I can edit that. Unpin. Okay, day two of June teaching series. And it's how to actually trade. 
and then um, see everything by registering, I probably spelled that wrong, uh, through the link in my bio. All right, now that everybody's on the train, let's work. Good evening, good evening, everybody. Good evening to you. I appreciate you. You all are amazing to me. You're wonderful. Um, thank you for showing up. This matters to me. Um, I want to give you value, and I want, um, I want it so that you know when you leave here, you feel good about what it is that you you spent your time doing, right? So I'm not going to waste a lot of your time. Today's lecture might be a little longer because. Um, you know, it's going to be some questions. It's going to be some back and forth on this one. We're going to get into some chart stuff, into some trading stuff, uh, and it's going to be really, really cool, okay? Really, really cool stuff uh, the whole time. So uh, you guys ready to start? If you're ready to start, unmute your mic and say yes or type, let's do it in the chat or something like that. Yes. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. Good. Good. I don't know if there are any mentors here, but if there are, you guys shout out for me so I can kind of make you co-host uh, for the meeting. You know, if you shout out to me, I can do that. Uh, and you just shout when you see it. Everybody, if you're on Instagram, I love you and I appreciate you. I'm going live on this one because, you know, your questions matter too. However, I would love to see you inside of the Zoom. And then everybody that's on IG and on Zoom, if you're having a good time in here, we're going to keep it going all month, but go tell your friends about it, you know, tell your broke friends, tell your rich friends, tell your friends who uh, need a little help this summer, tell your teaching friends who are on a 10 month pay scale and it's two months of summer and they don't know what they're going to do. Tell all your people that's in the gig economy, your hairstylist, your makeup artist, your photographer friends, those friends that, you know, we're not sure if the gig going to come through this month or not, you know, and that gig saved their life like it used to save mine when I was uh, playing piano. You know, tell, tell folks because it's time for everyone to uh, have the information. We don't want to keep it, okay? We want everybody to have it. All right. Let's yeah, I'm in the out. building, big bro. Okay, okay. All right. That was DG? What's yeah. Up, man? All right, good, brother. All right, making you a co-host now, brother. If anybody's on here and they're a co-host, these are people that are, um, that are very, very good. They know about the charts. They know about trading. They know about a lot of stuff. We worked together, and we still do um, in the community, okay? Anybody, uh, this your first time ever hanging out and, and learning from me? If it's your first time, be like, first time, or I'm your mic, say first time, first time. Never really been in a trading with you before. Um, first time. First time, all right, what up, Drew? Anybody else? It's your first time. I am, uh, I'm Jay, you know what I'm saying? It's nothing nothing too crazy. We. I just really like trading and I really like teaching people how to trade. We'll get into all that. Anybody else? If it's your first time, I just want to say what up and thank you for, um, you know, like hollering at your boy and uh, coming through, it means a lot to me. I'm gonna share my screen. If you all can see my screen, say yeah, I can see it or say no. Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. that's, that's my best time. Yes. Here. Okay, tonight we're going to talk about how to actually trade. I got another question real fast. Y'all can see my screen. Can you still see me on the screen somewhere talking like this? Yes. 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 Okay, good, good, good. All right, let's do it. How to actually trade tonight. All right, how to actually do it. Um, let's work. Who this, am I? This this gonna work for binary options too, right? Man, it worked for everything. This is how markets work. Uh, I don't teach no tricks. I teach how markets work, how people do it. So, All right. you know, let's work. Let's work. Um, everybody calls me Jay the Trader. My name is Jason Sweeting. Um, I'm a trader from Miami, Florida. I love to trade. I'm really good at it. Um, but outside of just trading, I love teaching people how to trade. What I've been able to do with education is help people uh, fire their bosses and get off their jobs and pay off their bills and buy cars cash and pay off their homes and retire their spouses. And, you know, kind of, you know, I'm really good at that part. Um, stuff I've done in the market, you know, four figure days, five figure days, six figure days, those sort of things are, are regular. Um, and, um, you know, my accomplishments are cool. I've, you know, developed software and developed teaching systems and all kinds of stuff. 
um, more than anything, I love uh, my life because I get a chance to serve. You know, I, I get to help people out. Uh, every day I get like this new person who says, Jay, but what is a candle? And then a few weeks later, they're like, Jay, I just made $300. And then like in a year, they're like, hey, how do I help serve alongside you? You know, this is uh, what we do every day, all the time. I've seen it happen in so many people's lives. And if anybody knows me, just put in the chat, you know, if you've seen me kind of do this sort of thing too, you could just chat it out or you can unmute your, mute your mic and say, yeah, he's telling the truth. That's really what he does. He's telling the truth. And Jay the Trader is most definitely the truth. Yeah, I, I, I just do my best to grow and serve. What I typically say is, hi, my name is Jason Sweeting, but everybody calls me Jay the Trader. I love to trade. I'm a trader from Miami, Florida, but more than loving to trade, I love to teach. I believe that people deserve, listen to me, they deserve financial freedom. So I turn people into ATMs by teaching them to trade with confidence and consistency. That's what I do. All right, everybody cool on me? Y'all know me now, we can get past that. If you don't know me, now you know me. And if you uh, if you knew me before, you know I just have to ramble through that for all the folks who are getting to know me now, okay? Let's do it. Where are we? Let's get to work. All right, what I'm gonna do today is, I don't know if some, some of you all, it might be an introduction to systems, but it uh, also could be uh, like a refresher to some systems, or we're just gonna discuss systems. Um, one of the earliest influences in my life, um, you know, I love Michael Jackson, you know, my music background. And then uh, when it came down to action movies as a kid, I spent a lot of time at my grandmother's house and my grandmother and my auntie Dot used to watch a lot of Bruce Lee. And uh, I got into Bruce Lee um, when I was young. So I've always been a fan of people who like to study and people who like to study their art form. And when I began as a young trader, I think I did what every young trader does. And that was study a lot of different methodologies. Now I'll introduce mine, I'll tell you why it works, but I'm gonna also tell you about the others. And you can see like my thoughts on them, why, they, why I like them, why I don't, what's good about them, what's not good about them. Is that fair? Is that cool? Can I do that? Yeah. Yes, okay, it right. won't be long, but I have to do this because I can't tell you, hey guys, see. If I tell you C, D, E, F, G, you're going to be like, hey, Jay, what happened to A and B? So I kind of, tonight, I want to teach you like my thing, but I have to get, I kind of have to show you how I got there, okay? So imagine it's 2014, right? And um, like I first got introduced to the candles a little earlier, maybe like 2012. And then uh, 2014, I get another like foray into the candles and I'm, I'm going to be like intellectual about it. You know, I'm not going to be kind of like gambling. I'm going to go try and learn some stuff. So the first thing I ran into was Fibonacci. Anybody familiar with Fibonacci? Put a Y in the chat box or say yes or no. Anybody familiar? You guys are not? Okay, cool. Fibonacci is a trading strategy that uses this thing called the golden ratio to determine entry and exit points for trades on all time frames. It's simple. I'll show you how it works. Say um, you got a market and the market is moving like this. What Fibonacci tells you to do is kind of draw a line from the bottom or top of a move to the opposite side. So uh, Fibonacci will say, hey, you know, you draw a line like this. And when you draw that line, what happens is um, there's math that says, if this is the zero and this is the 100 of that move, and when I say that, I mean by percentage. So whatever instrument you're looking at, you can be looking at the bonds or the ES or gold or any currency pair. If you look at the zero, like the bottom of the move and the 100, the top of the move, then Fibonacci's math can let you do things like retrace it or extend it. So uh, what he had was like uh, these cool percentages that markets seem to always come back to. So a market can come back down to the 78 or to the 61 or to the 50 or even down to the 38.2. And I know my arrows aren't good, but what that represents sort of would be like these horizontal lines. And these lines would kind of be associated with places in the move. So you could see for yourself, man, if the buyers were able to take the market from the bottom to the quote unquote top, 
and they started to retrace where they might retrace to. It's a pretty cool system. I like the system and it works sometimes, you know? This is what I liked about it. I like that it was easy to adapt. You can basically kind of put a line on your chart and start making some predictions about what'll happen from a retracement standpoint. And then he would also do the same thing from an extension standpoint. So what he would say is if the market will pull back to these golden ratio percentages, 78, 61, 38, sometimes 50 is looked in there too, then if it'll pull back that far, then it might extend further once it pulled back. So you would have a retracement to some sort of point and then obviously an extension to continue the move. Everybody with me on that? Now, I liked it. It was cool. I like the fact that I can get it going really quickly. I like the fact that it made me feel like I was trading. Like it, it put things on my chart that made it look like something cool, you know? Uh, it made me feel that it was good psychologically. Uh, I like the fact that there was some sort of rule I can test things by. Like it was something in place. Uh, the things that I didn't like about it is that it was not predictive enough. Uh, what I didn't like about it was that it was not accurate. Like I didn't know when the market came back, which one of those lines it would stop at in order to go up. Um, I think it left me blind and ultimately I end up losing more money than I was making with Fibonacci levels. Anybody had any experience losing more money than making with fibs? Anybody? Y'all can talk to me. Anybody ever use Fibonacci levels before? Come on, we tried. Yeah, I, u I used it. I never used it. You say you use it, but what happened? Yeah, when I used it, I didn't um know where to place it. Like, as in, like if it was on the uptrend or downtrend, yeah. I had problems finding, you know, the zero point or you know, you know what I mean. Because like yeah. to every high, there was a higher high before that. So you or to low, there was a lower low. So mm -hmm. I mean, I, eventually, I just got confused. You know. Yeah, I use I use it as confirmation or confluence to other setups. Okay. Okay. So it would have to be used with something for you to kind of trust it more? 100%. Yeah, yeah, I experienced that sort of thing too because they would say, okay, you can use a Fibonacci with this indicator. So you can use Fibonacci and RSI or Fibonacci, usually some sort of dynamic indicator like a, an EMA or um, I'm sorry, an exponential moving average or some sort of Bollinger Band or RSI, some sort of dynamic something that would help so, bring those static levels to life. And then when that confluence happened, when you have, say for example, the 61.8 touching the EMA on a retracement, then you knew you would have a high chance of buyers. So you would need things to, con uh, to confirm. I, I, I experienced that too. That's good. So before, J before Jada Trader, I used it with the Ikimoko Cloud, but oh, after, wow. Jada, good, after, good, Jada, good. after Jada Trader, I can use it with gaps. I can use it with levels. I can use it with all kinds of stuff, which <laughs> oh, is much no. more accurate. Well, things things get a little bit better after Jada Trader. Uh, so I studied this stuff. This was cool. It was very, very good, but it kind of left me wanting some stuff, okay? And I'm glad you mentioned Ichimoku, too. A lot of people don't really know about Ichimoku and his dragons and his clown. We'll keep talking. Let's keep talking. The next thing I studied was Elliott Waves. Elliott Waves is kind of like this theory and what it tries to do is graphically represent psychology of optimism and pe pessimism. It goes like this. It goes like off of a five-wave theory. So Elliot, and I know, can you imagine? Ladies, lady, lady, I'm teaching. I love you. So if you can imagine um, young Jada Trader, you know what I'm saying? And, and I'm like trying to learn like this little stuff, right? You know, Elliot, he has these sort of patterns. And what it does is try, it tries to graphically represent optimism and pessimistic psychology. So that was the next thing that I went to. I went to, uh, I went to Elliot Waves. Anybody have any um, familiarity with Elliot Waves? Anybody studied those? I think I did like six months on Elliot Waves. And when I, like my six months is every day, every night, all the time, looking at it, studying it, you know, anybody ever did time with Elliott waves? Yes or no? No. Oh, 
Okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, no, Elliot sir. Waves was cool. I'll tell you why Elliot Waves is cool. Elliot Waves is cool because it allows you to start understanding that psychology plays a part in price action. Because before then, it was like either you are technical or fundamental or quantitative or qualitative. You couldn't be more than one thing. Like people would say, well, what kind of trader are you? And you had to say, well, I'm a fundamental trader. And then from there, you would have to talk about all of the fundamentals and you couldn't ever lean to anything else. Uh, so I like the fact that for me in my trading career, what Elliott Wave gave me was the ability to recognize that these things are moving because of people's belief. That was the key that unlocked it. That was the only real key that unlocked it for me. You know, hey, and if you're on Instagram, what you can do, uh, you it's free to get in. You can get in any kind of way. Just go to the link in my bio, sign up, come on in, hang out. Um, if you have questions, put the questions in. New TLR, I see you, bro. And I think I see my dog Ujuru on there too. Good to see you, bro. So Elliott Wave for me was a good thing. Um, I liked it for that. What I didn't like about it is you. It, it was a study of cycles and patterns, okay? Cycles and patterns are good to represent the market, but what it did was locked in human belief. Like people are creatures of habit to some degree, but people can also surprise you. You know, like um, who says that a seven-year-old can't be a culinary genius? So we have to make allowance. Oh, you gonna say hello, come say hello. Okay. No, I'm live on Instagram. On my phone. No, this is Zoom. Yeah, this is Zoom and this is Instagram. Everybody told me that what I should do is do it on Instagram and Zoom and encourage the people on Instagram to come to Zoom so that they can see what's on the screen. So that's why I'm doing it with both. Okay. All right. I'll be done in like, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. Okay. Yes, 20 minutes. No, no, it ain't been 20 minutes going now. All right. I am so tired of that alone. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now we're back. I think we're back. Hold on, it's reconnecting. Okay, cool. Now we're back. Okay, so Elliot Waves, what I did not like about him is the fact that one, it takes a long time to recognize if it's occurring. Two, um, it doesn't take into account people's ability to change. And I don't like that. Um, also, what it did was give too much credence to emotion and not enough credence to what was actually happening in the market. Okay. So I did some time with Elliott Waves and that was cool. And uh, if you want to go check it out, it's pretty cool stuff. Uh, let me clear this. The next thing that I got into, and I think by this time, I was pretty much tired of a lot of stuff and I was losing a lot of money. So uh, <laughs> I got into price action and um, price action patterns and candlestick patterns. Anybody ever did price action before? Where the price action folks? Holla at me, holla at me, holla at me. Say yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Okay, price action people. Price action people are cool. I love price action. Um, price action has a lot of good. So what price action is, is noticing a formation of a candle or group of candles and then predicting what will occur after that because of, of, because of what has happened. So it's like, because these three candles happen, what will be the next candle? Or because this cluster of candles is happening, what will be the next candle? Or because this pattern has happened, what will be the next? And there are so many, like so many price action and candlestick patterns. There are dozens. And when I say dozens, I'm not joking. There are a lot of them. Um, so I started liking them, man. And uh, I'll tell you a couple. There are a couple of them that are super duper famous. Everybody, uh, if you know this one, you know, just say I've traded that before. Anybody ever traded triple tops? Anybody ever traded triple tops? Yeah. Triple bottoms? Yes. Okay, triple tops, triple bottoms. Okay, good, good, good. Anybody ever traded the most famous one ever? 
We can say it all together. Come on, head and, head and shoulders. shoulders. Head oh shoulders. my God, head and shoulders. Anybody ever traded head and shoulders? Jesus. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna draw this one. Let's see if if you uh, if you guys know this one. What if I did that? Yeah, I think you wait for the breakout on that. Yeah. What is that called? Come on, you guys know it. Bullish pennants. Anybody traded those? Some people call it the flag or something. Like that. Yeah, flag. bullish flags. Flags or pennants are the same thing. Bullish and bearish pennants. You know what I'm saying? So there are a lot of those. Um, this one I need a free hand for. Anybody ever traded this one before? It's called cup and handle. Handle. And handle. Cup and handle. Right. Okay. Cool. 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 We got that. There are so many. Um, what about? Um, okay. Here's another one. I'm gonna see if you guys know this one, and I'll draw it to the downside. This is so difficult to draw. Okay. Let's assume that's similar to the flag, right? It's very similar to the flag, but it's a little different in so much as let's assume that all these prices are the same. The bottom is the same. Anybody know wedges? Mm -hmm. Anybody know ascending and descending wedges? Anybody knows that? Yes. So candlestick and price action. Yeah, so, you know, uh, triple tops, double tops, um, cup and handle, head and shoulders, uh, bullish pennants or flags, bearish pennants or flags. You go inside of these things and what you are able to do is, quote unquote, predict the future behavior. You see what I'm saying? Like, uh, if these patterns come out, then this is what will happen. You know, that sort of thing. Um, so I studied a lot of those patterns. And then after that, I studied a lot of like, say, quote unquote, candle types. So um, like uh, morning stars, uh, evening stars, gravestones, uh, you're talking about tweezer tops. You're talking about these sort of things, like this candle next to this candle. So engulfing patterns, reversal patterns of actual candles being formed in the market. Uh, anybody, uh, anybody ever studied that kind of stuff? Anybody? You can say yeah, me or not. Nah, yeah, yes. yeah. I studied, I studied the do dojis and all those candles, but I started mm. relying on them too much, and that's what caused me to start failing eventually. Mm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You're relying on them too much because that's what caused you to start failing. It's funny you say that. I used to study them too. What I what I like about them is that they gave you a greater ability to perceive um, groups of information at a time. Like uh, if someone said this candle, what color is it? So I know this one teacher. He's um, he's such a genius. Uh, he says the candle's red, so sell it. You know, it's going down, so sell. The candle's green, so buy it. But what I've learned in my career is that the opposite is true. We, we buy the red candles and we sell the green ones because how else can price come to your entry unless if, if price is above and you want to buy, it has to come down to it. So the candle will be red when you enter as a buyer. And if if you're if you want to sell a price, the market has got to come up to it. So the candle will be green when you enter, you know? So there are so many uh, uh, of, of these things like the price action patterns, the candlestick patterns, this stuff was cool. You know what I'm saying? It was really, really cool stuff when I first started getting into it. What I liked about it is that it allowed me to see lots of information at once, way more than just kind of reading candle at a time. Another thing that I really appreciated about understanding price action patterns and candlestick patterns was it gave me more a vocabulary of the market. You know, when I could hear people say things like bullish or bearish, I can hear people say things like doji. I can hear people say things like acceleration or deceleration. Um, I can hear people say um, uh, patterns, you know what I'm saying? Um, so it was good that it gave me more of a vocabulary in the market. Another thing that I really did uh, like about this was that uh, it was predictive. Like it was more predictive, in my opinion, than Fibonacci was. Fib to me never got above 38% working, ever. You know, but price action kind of put me in the 50s. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Fib wasn't so great for me. Yeah. Nah, Fib was terrible for me. I mean, I was winning high 30s, mid 30s percentage. You know what I'm saying? It was it was a bloodbath out there. You know what I'm saying? 
It was really, really bad, you know? Uh, and then, you know, price action gave me a greater percentage of winning. And I, I liked it for that. What I did not like about it is that I was never more informed because of it. I was never more informed. Um, I never, uh, another thing that I really didn't like about it is like, I didn't know that a head and shoulders could have three shoulders. Like I didn't know, like if I was going to sell the triple top or the triple bottom, like I ain't know, like sometimes it wouldn't go down on the triple top on that third touch or go up on the, on the bottom of that triple bottom. Like it wouldn't go. Sometimes the pennants would reverse. And rather than being a bullish candle, a pennant, and then a continuation, it would be a, pull, a bullish candle, a pennant, and a pullback. And I would get beat. I would get burnt. You know? So um, I felt like while it had some virtues, it had vices. Um, it had lots of virtues and it had lots of vices. Uh, and there's a host of other things that I, I learned. There's uh, somebody mentioned Ichimoku before. I don't think I covered it in this particular presentation, but I'll cover Ichimoku for you. Ichimoku goes like this. Let me see if I can annotate. Let me uh, let me show you. There is a guy. Look, y'all are like Mr. Tabs. Um, let me go uh, Ichimoku Cloud. Let me show you what it looks like. Um, images. This is an Ichimoku cloud right here. Can everybody see this on the right? Yeah. Type a Y or say yes. And yeah, there's so many things. There's Haikanashi and um, Ichimoku, and there's a whole lot of methodologies when it comes to trading. And I have tried them all because as a trader, what you're typically looking for is a silver bullet, right? So Ichimoku was this uh, guy, mathematician, scientist type, and what he did was have a cloud and three dragons. Somebody say cloud, say cloud. Oh, cloud. Yeah, I'm not gonna say cloud. cloud. Okay, cool. Now say three dragons. Three dragons. Three dragons. Okay, cool, cool, cool. The cloud represented an area of price and the three dragons were moving averages. And then there were rules. So the dragons have names. Anybody know the names of the dragon? I know they all kind of end in E-N. Uh, Kinkinson. 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 Yeah, Kijin. Yeah. Kijinson. Name. Chiku, so. Chiku Span. Yeah, they're, that's their name. Tinkinson and Kujinson and all this stuff. So he had <laughs> dragons. And what he would say, if, if this dragon flew under this dragon and this the other third dragon was still under, while they were above the cloud, then Price would do this. If this dragon flew under the other dragon, so if dragon one flew over dragon two and dragon three was at the top and they were doing this under the cloud, then it would go up. And it were all of these rules about what would happen with price depending on what was happening with the dragons and the cloud. It was confusing. Anybody ever traded Ichimoku clouds and dragons? Yeah, I trade Uchimuku clouds. I don't know about the dragon terminology. Oh, yeah. Th those are the moving averages. That's the name of the dragons. Look. What are the names of Ichimoku? Ichimoku, or Ichimoku for short, is a technical indicator that uses gauge momentum along with future areas of support and resistance. The all-in-one technical indicator is comprised of five lines called the Tinkinson, Hujinson, single Oh, oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yes. You see? You see so, that in the input when you- um, He called him input. his dragons. That was the name of them. So you could be like Ichimoku dragons. You see what I'm saying? Um, and this was all cool. Don't get it twisted. It was cool, but uh, it was confusing as heck. It's so confusing. I don't even think people on here really use it. Anybody use Ichimoku right now today? Anybody use it every day? Uh, yeah. Only as a reference. Only as a reference. Okay, when I used it, first I started using it and I found it to be really, really cool as the time frames got higher. The higher the time frames for me, the cooler it was. I'll be honest. Yes. Um, yes, what I liked about it is that it tended to work. 
What I did not like about it is that it was very, very confusing. And then the other thing I didn't like about it is that it was imprecise. Investors with a lot of money can afford to lose a trade for two years in order to win it for five years. But broke keyboard players from Miami, Florida that are homeless and trading at Starbucks in a combine could not afford to lose a trade for two minutes. And that was my situation. My situation was I needed a tool that was more efficient at predicting price precisely, not just being accurate, but being precise. Um, and I just couldn't find it in Ichimoku. And there are a host of them, man. It's a host of uh, trading methodologies. And then of course, there are a host of indicators, static and dynamic indicators, leading and lagging indicators, it's all of them. And I'm telling you, when I tell you Jay has tried them all, I have tried them all. I'm not even trying to front with you. Like I've blown whole combines on Bollinger Bands. I have blown real grocery money on RSI, real. I have really blown gig money on EMAs and Jesus Christ, MACD, MACD, Jesus, MACD, Lord MACD. Why did I even hear that word? Man, I blew a count almost a hundred times depending on them indicators. Oh my God, MACD. I could, if I ever saw MACD, I think I would fight him right where he stood at. Wherever he was at is right where I would fight. Uh, so what I what I wanted to do after going through all of these systems was create something that for me would work how I wanted it to work. This is what I needed. I needed something that would work every day, that would work everywhere, that was simple, and would work even if you was poor. Listen to me, and I'm being very serious. I needed it to work every day. It couldn't work once a month. It had to work every day. I needed it to work everywhere, no matter what kind of chart I looked at. I needed it to work everywhere. I needed it to work if I was poor and I needed it to be simple. When I say poor, I mean poor, like, hey, I can't afford for my family to live with me. So I take them back to my father-in-law's house and I sleep in my car while I go to work um, playing gigs for people and I trade when I'm not at a gig poor, okay? So it had to work. And uh, I thank God that I was able to figure it out. I was able to figure it out. Do y'all want to see what I figured out? Yes. Yeah. Yes. For sure. Why yeah. not? If, if you trade it <laughs> yes, with sir. me, yes, sir. Before, if you trade it with me before, then you kind of know some of this stuff. But I don't think you know all of this stuff. And I want you to kind of ride with me. If you've never traded with me before, you don't know none of this stuff and you've never heard it anywhere. If you never traded with me before, you don't know this stuff and you've never heard it before. So what I'm about to tell you is very precious to me. It costed me everything. It almost cost me my marriage. It definitely costed me my peace. It cost me everything a lot of crying, a lot of tears, okay? So I'm gonna show it to you. I hope you like it and I hope it makes sense to you. Let me tell you how I arrived at it. So we're gonna draw on my home screen. Most people, when they study Ichimoku, Elliott waves, price action patterns, candlestick patterns, Fibonacci, or any of the indicators, what they are studying are leaves. They're studying leaves. They're studying leaves. I need a picture of a tree. Now, this part ain't even in the presentation. I just really wanted you to understand why I'm doing it, how I'm doing it, like where it really goes in my life. Can I save this? Save image as. Okay, let's save it as that. And then what we'll do is we'll go and we'll open it up. There you go. Open that up. 
Hey, use, I don't know, use paint to open it up, I guess. Always, go ahead. I don't use, oh, you can't read the file? Okay, who else can read it? Okay, forget about it. I'll just draw on it right here. Now look, Ichimoku, all of those guys, I'm gonna tell you where they are to me. And this is not to be funny because I've made money and lost money with them, but all of them are up here. That's where they are. And even more so, if I was to be very specific, I would have to do this and I would have to find a fruit tree. And I would say, Ichimoku and those guys are here, clear all, they're, they're up here. It's a good idea. It's not a bad idea. You walk by an orange tree, you grab an orange, you eat the orange and you walk off. I know you can't see my screen because you gotta be in the live. You gotta be in the live, register through Zoom. It's right there. I don't mind this. You see what I'm saying? I don't mind it. It's pretty cool. You walk by a tree, you grab the fruit, but the fruit are the result. They are not the cause. Anybody know about cause and effect? Tell me yeah, if you know, you ever heard of cause and effect. Like, you know, anybody know cause and effect? Yeah. Why yeah. did the building fall? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, because it, was a, it wasn't built poorly. It, I mean, it wasn't built well. You know what I'm saying? Like things happen because of something. And when you look at Fibonacci, it's because of something that Fibonacci happens. When you look at Elliott waves, it's because of something that Elliott waves happen. When you look at uh, Ichimoku cloud, it's because of something that Ichimoku happens. For me, I don't want to study the fruit of a tree. Anybody was on the training last night? Anybody? Who was yeah. on? Unmute your mic, say you was on. Anybody on yeah. there? I don't like I was the fruit. On. Yes. What do I like? What do I like? The root. The root. I like the root. If we're going to be here, then let's not figure out um, what happened. Let's figure out why it happened. Because Ichimoku and Fibonacci, they tell me what is going to happen. They tell me when it's going to happen. Sometimes. Some, and they tell me where it's going to happen. Sometimes. They never tell me why it happened. The only reason the fruit is growing is because of the root. That's it. Does everybody understand me clearly on that part? Say yes, or if you want me yes. to, I'll slow it down and we'll do it again. Does everybody yeah. understand it? Is everybody yeah. clear on that? Yeah. Hello. Anybody say, Jay, say it again. Make sure I get it. Say it one more time. Everybody got it? Yep. All right. So then let's not study the fruit. Let's study the root. Let's study exactly why things are happening. Most people and most teachers, this is the scary part, most teachers that are teaching now in the market cannot tell you why the candles are moving. They don't even know why it's happening. But if we can figure out why they even move, then who cares about their movement patterns? We know why it's happening. You see what I'm saying? This is the root. This is the beginning. This is the source. And I wanted to trade that. So uh, we got all the other stuff. Let me, let me get me back on the presentation and we'll keep on going. Let's go. All right. I think this might start in front of the beginning. Let's see. Okay. So let's keep on going. Boom, boom, boom. Now here, what is the method? Okay. The method is like this. Annotate, clear that annotation. The J the Trader method, like what I made up, goes like this. It's an inventory-based trading system that focuses on why and how candles move and who's moving them. It works because of two thoughts. 
The first thought is the conversation. Somebody say conversation. Conversation. Come on now, we say we was gonna really nerd out on this trade and stuff. We that don't mean we gonna look at a chart. That means we are gonna make sense of it. The chart is only the explanation of the methodology in picture form. So let's really nerd out because before we can play the piano, we got to talk about how the notes even happened. You know, that's how I'd start playing the thing over there. Before we talk about the law, we have to talk about why it even happened. Before we talk about the insurance system, we have to talk about why it was even born. Before we talk about the penal system, we have to talk about why it even happened. Before we talk about policemen, we have to talk about why it even happened. When did it start? Why? So we have to talk about the conversation, and then we have to talk about the second thing, inventory as a voting system. Somebody say inventory as a voting system. 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 This is how it works for me. This is how it works for me. And it's two simple thoughts, very, very simple. The conversation goes like this. In order to have a conversation, you need to have people talking. If one person was talking by themselves, it would not be a conversation, it would be a monologue. So the conversation, it needs at least two people in it. And for a long time, I thought that there were only two people in the conversation, but there aren't, there are three. You know who taught me the third person in the conversation? Ask, ask me. I swear, I was a young trader and I knew who was in the market. It was buyers and sellers. Everybody knew, bulls and bears. And, the, and then there was this quote about greedy little pigs, but everybody knew the real people were bulls and bears, sellers and buyers. But there was a third person. Guess who taught me the third person? You would never, ever guess. 50 Cent taught me the third person. You know how he taught it to me? He said, use a window shopper, mad at me. And I think, you know, uh, when he said I was I was a trader, a young trader, and I heard the song Window Shopper. And I swear it went boom in my head. Oh, my God, there's a third person there. So there's a conversation going on and three people are having it. Somebody say three people. Three people, three people. Three people. Three people are having the conversation. You want to know who they are? Let's go. I'm going to text. Let's go ahead like this. The conversation is being had with three people and they are uh, buyers. Name the, name the other one. Anybody know what's the opposite of buyers? Sellers. 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 Good. Now the third one, we call them window shoppers or people waiting to be a buyer or seller. People waiting to be a buyer or seller. Those are the only three people that can ever be in a market. Those are the only three people that can ever be in it. Either you selling something, you buying something, or you waiting to buy or sell something. And every market has them, the car market, the real estate market, the grocery market, the supermarket. There are, you go to the mall, the mall is a market. There are buyers there and there are sellers there. A market is simply a place where buyers, sellers, Buyers and sellers can meet to exchange value. That's all a market is. They are exchanging value. Value can be exchanged in attention, in love, in uh, physical favors, uh, in money. It can be, you know, value can be exchanged a lot of ways, but a market is just a place where buyers and sellers can meet to exchange value. Listen to me. But the third person there is the window shopper. You go to a mall, guess what? There are stores, those are the sale sellers. Then you have people walking in and out of the stores, those are the buyers. Then you have the people who are not there to buy anything or sell anything. They are just there to be there. If they see the right thing, they might buy it. Or if you know they're outside of the big game, which is a market, and they see the right opportunity for a buyer, they might sell them some tickets. Does everybody understand who's in there? You got it? Tell me yes or no. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Yeah. I, I yeah. mean not to leave you yes. behind on this. I mean to teach you today, all right? There are buyers, there are sellers, and there are people waiting to be buyers and sellers. This is Jay, right about now, it's kind of like 2016-ish. 
2017. And I'm looking around going, oh my God, markets are everywhere. Facebook is a market. Twitter is a market. The grocery store is a market, the job market, the real estate market, the housing market. And I'm looking and I'm identifying, okay, at a job. And this is the old stuff. This is like when I first start thinking about what it was for me, okay, the job market, okay, the, the person looking for a job is selling their skills, the employer is buying the skills, so they trade value, I'll take your skill, and you'll take my money, that's a trade, um, okay, where, uh, okay, the real estate market, you have houses, people who own houses, and people who uh, want to buy a house, so you got your sellers and your buyers, then you got the people like, you know, when I was growing up, we was just driving around looking at houses, you know what I'm saying, like, we was just driving around in a good neighborhood, you know what I'm saying, we wasn't buying, and we wasn't selling, we was just wishing, you know what I'm saying, we had that, that was a thing for us, and the market was real, now here's the conversation that they're having, Really simple conversation. Everybody's only got two lines. The two lines go like this. Can I, okay. It goes like this. I'll buy that. Oh, no. Not I'll. I, Jason. I'll buy that. Or not. Then the other one can say, I'll sell that or not. Buyers are sitting around going, I buy that or I won't. And sellers are going around, I say you this or I won't. Buyers are all, they are, buyers are ravenous. They are looking around going, I'll buy, I'll buy, 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 I'll buy, I'll buy. And sellers are saying, I'll sell it to you. No, I won't, I won't. And then buyers are saying, oh, I, I want to buy. No, I won't buy that. I won't buy that. I won't buy. So I start having, I start making up these stories. And if you're my student, you know, you've heard the stories of like what to buy and at what price. Like you've heard me tell you the story. Can I tell you a quick two minute story? Anybody want to hear a story about buyers and sellers? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Quick story about buyers and sellers. So there's a guy, he goes into the grocery store. It's, um, he's going to um, get all, all of his stuff for spaghetti night. So he gets the noodles and he gets the uh, ground turkey and chicken. Um, he gets some of the oregano and some fresh sauce. Uh, and then he gets some bread because he's gonna do uh, fresh garlic bread. So he gets some garlic and he gets some basil and he gets some um, butter and he goes to check out. And as he's checking out, he says, oh, I ran out of gum. I need to get some more gum for the car, get some uh, more gum for the house. And I'll get some more gum for my uh, office at the job. I'll get some more gum to put in my desk. So that way I always have fresh breath. You know what I'm saying? So last week he bought gum. He knows his kind. His kind is trident gum. He loves trident gum. He loves the new little trident squares, right? So he, um, while he's checking out, he's putting all of his groceries on the turnstile. Like I'm literally telling myself this story when I'm a young trader. He's putting his groceries on the turnstile. The lady says, hey, did you find everything okay? He says, yeah, I found everything great. And um, he says, oh my God, the, um, the gum. So he turns around and he grabs gum. And when he looks down, the gum is $1,000, uh, 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 like $1,000 for each thing of gum. It's $1,000. So he's, he, he says, when, hey, you know, the, is this a, a good number? I thought it was a dollar for the gum. Are you sure it's $1,000? He say, yeah, gum done got expensive, baby. Why she, I mean, she just nonchalant. She just said, gum done got expensive. And what he says is, it's too high to buy. And isn't that what happens in the market? We'll see a price. We'll want to buy it. And some of us have even made this mistake. The market is coming down to a price. And you say, man, I should buy it here. But mm -mm, it's too high to buy at this price. I need it to come down lower in order for me to participate as a buyer. And we do it all the time. Ladies, your nice shoes that you want. You want these shoes. These shoes are cool. You go to the store to pick them up. You say, ooh, they nice. You turn them over. The shoes are $5,000. You turn them right back over. Mm -mm, child, no, I ain't paying $5,000 for them shoes. Mm -mm. That price convinced you real quick that you ain't want them no more. That happens every day. It's too high to buy. You see what I'm saying? This conversation is I'll buy that or not, or I'll sell that or not. Does everybody understand the conversation? And if you don't, tell me, explain it. Go. I definitely understand. You understand it. Anybody else? 
This is your time. I'm oh, really, I understand. I'm going to just tell you right now, everybody, I am the very best teacher. And I'm not saying that because it's a joke. I'm not saying it because it's funny. I'm not saying, I'm just saying nobody's better than me at teaching this stuff. Nobody. I unlock people's minds when it comes down to understanding the market. Please, if you need help, say, say it again. Don't be over here and be lost. Do you understand the conversation? I understand. Say Everybody it again, understand? please. Say no, say it again. Say it again. Say it again. Yeah. Okay. You might want to buy something. Okay, let's stop the share. Here we go. Let's uh let's really get into it. Okay, stop the share. You might want to buy something, but the price is too high for you to buy. You cannot participate in the market as a buyer at that price. For example, let's say right now, median home prices in your neighborhood, and at let's not say yours, let's say in a neighborhood, the neighborhood is gonna be called uh, Bullet Town. Bullet Town, USA. In Bullet Town, USA, the median homes of prices is $350,000. That's the median home. Everybody know the median home of a price? I mean, median price of a home in Bullet Town? Tell me what's the price. Come on, say it. 350,000. Come on, 350,000. Somebody 350. else. 350. 350. That's 350,000. However, you want to go buy one. You go up to somebody's house, they have a for sale sign on the house. You knock. Hey, how you doing now, uh, uh, Mr. Seller? How you doing? He says, I'm doing real good. His wife walk up, hey, how you doing? You coming to buy a house? You say, yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I would love to buy your house. I want to offer you $350,000 for your beautiful house. They say, no, no, no. We only sell in our house for a million dollars. What do you say? Do you just buy it for a million dollars? Yes or no? No. 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 Yeah. Why? Why wouldn't you buy it? You wanted it. You because went they, up they to the people and why, why won't you buy it? Because it's 350K that the whole time. Why would I buy spend a million dollars? Why would you spend more on that asset than it's worth? You can't buy it if it's too high to buy. Price too high. It's a great asset. I'm interested in it, but I'm not interested at that price. Listen to me, because we talking about trading already. No matter who you are, where you are, or what you're doing, you are always in a trade. You always in one. From the time you got here and started breathing, you was a trader. Listen to me real good, because I ain't lying. I'm telling you how God gave it to me. The moment you got here, you was a trader. Guess what you traded in the beginning? You traded annoyance. I will yell, I will scream, and I will fidget until you give me what I want. Ha, ha, ha. Bottle, hmm, calm, I got what I want. Ha, ha, ha. Change my diaper, hmm, I got what I want. You were always trading. That kept on going. You went to elementary school. You had peanut butter and jelly. You know you don't like no peanut butter and jelly, but your friend had bologna and cheese. You love bologna and cheese. Your friend liked peanut butter and jelly. Now y'all in the lunchroom in kindergarten and what do you say? I'll trade you. I'll trade you. I'll trade you. Guess what? You got a little bit older. You got into Pokemon cars or baseball cars or football cars or basketball cars. Guess what you did? You traded them. I'll give you three of these for one of those. The value of one of these is worth five of those. I'll never give it to you for just three. You got to give me all five for me to give you my one. You was trading value. You was exchanging value. You got a little bit older and you heard this outside. Ding, 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 ding. If you grew up where I came up, that's what you heard. Ding, 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 ding. And everybody said what? Ho, ho, ho. What it was? It was the ice cream man. You ran up on the truck. Guess what you say? Pablo, Pablo, let me get a hot sausage, a pickle egg, a big blow, you dig, and a screwball. Pablo say, man, man, that's $5. You say, Pablo, you lying. 
Pablo, that's a dollar twenty-five. I already know how much a hot sausage is. Pablo say it's sixty-five cents. You say how much a pickle leg is? He say that's thirty-five cents. I say that's a dollar. You should give me a big blow and a screwball for the other twenty-five. Don't play with me. You was trading. You have always been a trader. And guess what you trade now? You on Instagram scrolling. You just scrolling. Mm. You are attention. trading. They are giving you content. They are entertaining you, informing you, motivating you, inspiring you, disgusting you, or whatever. They're, they're giving you content and you're giving them attention. You are trading your attention for their content. Your time. <laughs> Trust me. Hey, you know why you got in that relationship with her? And you know why you got in that relationship with him? Because it was a good trade. You loved it did him and he loved it did you. He would write you notes and he would call to your job and you would call him back and make him his favorite food and plate. Guess what? You knew that that trade was good. You loved it did that trade until you ain't loved it did no more. You looked through his phone and saw he was talking to somebody else. You got to get out of the trade now. The trade is no longer worth your value. Listen to me when I'm trying to tell you that you always been a trader. You have been selling and buying your entire life. And you always have known when to stop. You might watch a show on HBO for five minutes and you say, mm -mm, this ain't even going to be good. So you get out of the trade. You change the channel. You turn on a song, that new song, you say, mm, I kind of like that. So you like the trade. You cut the volume up. I know I did it just the other day. Me and my kids riding to school. I say, it's the first of the month. Wake up, wake up. So catch your checks that come up. I played it just yesterday on the way to school with my kids. I'm telling you, you've always been a trader. You've always been in the conversation, always. You've always done it. Now we just got to apply it. Does everybody understand the conversation now? Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. Anybody else need me to repeat it? Okay, no? Okay, good. Here we go. The other part of this thing, other than the conversation, and we're talking about the Jada Trader uh, method, it's an inventory-based system. It's an inventory-based trading system that focuses on why and how candles move and who's moving them. So the people that are moving them are the buyers and the sellers and the people waiting to be buyers and sellers. Why they move is because of inventory. Somebody say inventory. 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 Your teachers on the internet don't know this. Some of them are here. Hello. I appreciate you, my comrade. Thank you to all of the good ones. I think I saw uh, uh, who I saw. I saw Tim on here. Where are the other trading coaches at? I thought I saw um, the options. My options guy, Kevin from, um, from New Orleans. I thought I saw him on here earlier. Love to him. Um, it, 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 any of the other educators, love to them. Love. Somebody shout out your favorite educator on here right now or shout out another educator for me so I can make sure I shout them out because they're amazing. There's some people Tay doing Sweat. some great. Who that? I said Tay Sweat. Tay is amazing. Great educator. Who else? Who else? Come on. Shout out the good ones. Raven Wise. Raven Wise. Great educator. Oh, Love heck them. yeah, for sure. Who else? Who else? Come on. Terry Egioma. Terry Egioma. I know Terry very well. She's a great one. Shout out to my sister. Great trader. Roslyn. Somebody say, I don't know who Roslyn is, but love to Roslyn, whoever that is. They don't know this. 100K. 100K. That's my man. That's Kevin. Call me 100K. That's my dog. Wall Street Trapper. He's a great guy. They don't know this. If they knew this, they wouldn't lose. Anybody ever watch me trade? ICT. ICT. Shout out to them. They don't know this. Anybody ever watch me trade before? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Do I be losing? Yeah. No. No. 
Oh, okay. Anybody ever saw when I took $1,500 and turned it into $50,000 in 42 days, trading no more than an hour a day? Anybody saw when I did that? Y'all didn't see that? Y'all didn't see that? Yeah. Actually, no, that is... Y'all didn't see that? Okay, remind me to pull it up. I'll pull it up for you so y'all can I see. I've seen your story, yeah. I'll show you the actual chart in the in the uh, the Ninja Trader brokerage line, and I can show you the uh, the statements. You know what I'm saying? I'll pull them up for you. It was uh, fun. Yeah, I know what you're talking about now. I'll try to figure out what you're talking about. Yeah, but Aristotle. I that's that. another Absolutely. one. I know that brother. Good Absolutely. brother. We've never met Aristotle. Is great. He doesn't know this. What I'm about to teach you is why markets work. We're finally ready to get to the root of the tree. Aristotle and um, Jack from Major League, Trapper is gonna be very fundamental. Uh, Terry is gonna be very swingy, not as precise as she should be. Uh, Tay, he flew me in to teach him what I'm about to teach you. He's a great trader at options, but uh, you need a whole lot of leverage in those options in order to do it right um, and to make that kind of money a day. With options, you typically kind of put up X to make X plus two or put up X to make X times, uh, you know, three, three halves or something like that. It's really, uh, it's a it's a, it's a a crazy thing. Chris Johnson, great, he doesn't know this, okay? Because if any of them knew this, then they wouldn't lose. If any of them knew it. And I'm not saying that this system is impervious to loss, but what I'm saying is that this system is the root to all the other ones moving. And I'm not, and it's love. No, nah, no love to Ian. Uh, love to the prophet room, love to Jerisa. Okay. Love, love. And yes, I said it out loud, tell everybody. It's no disrespect, great guy. I just don't think he's a good teacher. Okay. This is inventory as a voting system. I don't need it. Inventory <laughs> as a voting system. Inventory as a voting system. If you ask a regular trader or even a regular trading teacher, why are the candles moving? Most of them will say, because the people buying and selling. But buying and selling does not make the candles move. It doesn't make a move. Inventory makes the candles move. Can I explain it to you? Yes, sir. Go ahead, brother. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. It's going to be real simple. I'm going to explain it like a bar fight. You want to see a bar fight? <laughs> A bar fight. Y'all know bar fights? Y'all know fighting? Fighting like punching, kicking, fighting? Yeah, fight club. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. No, no, okay, fighting. Okay, cool. Let, like, let's just say everybody has got, everybody I'm about to tell you about, they got the same uh, uh, like ability and look at somebody said supply and demand. Yeah, okay. Um, see, see, when I say, why do the candles move? This is so funny. People say the candles move because of supply and demand. What does that mean? Um, <laughs> So, 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 all, every, love to everybody. They just don't know this. So nobody knows it. This is nowhere. And I, I bet you in like two weeks, people are going to be saying, I have a workshop for y'all. It's going to be $800 for the workshop. I'm going to teach you inventory as a voting system. Or they might put some new name on it. So you think it's cool. And then you're going to pay them $800. And then you're going to be like, Jay taught me this for free. Um, so, so imagine it's 10 guys, uh, let's say eight guys are gonna fight. Eight guys, somebody say eight guys. Eight guys. Eight. Good, eight guys are gonna fight. When the eight guys are gonna fight, they all have the same, about the same fighting skill and ability. There are five of them gonna be fighting for the red team and three of them are gonna be fighting for the green team. Five red, three green. If they all have about the same trading, I mean, about the same fighting skill, who do you think will win? The five red will win or the three green? Five red. All five, five red. Five, five red. red. Five red. Because if they have to pair up, it'll be like this. And then two more will be strong enough to help. And obviously, the, the red will win. And that's how you train. 
Let me slow it up so I can speed it up. Uh, let's go like this. I'm going to share my screen so I can explain it. Um, let me see. Uh, let's draw it. Let's just say that you wanted to buy, but you needed a good price with which to buy. Okay. Um, what you need is to have a price where there are more buyers than sellers. Does everybody understand that? Or do you need me to explain it? We yeah, understand, I understand it. Yeah, I understand it. I'm following okay. When you have anybody ever traded on a volume based chart where there are volume indicators or a volume profile? Yes. Good. Anybody understand what volume is in the market? Tell me. Yes. Okay, volume, yeah. not the volume that you turn up on the radio, but volume just means the amount of, the amount of orders typically people say are in the market. So you might be in a market, let's pull up a, a, a whiteboard. So let me stop my share and then let me go share and then let me share a whiteboard and then let's teach for real, Jay, because they don't get it. So you got to make sure you give it to them. Here's a chart. Let's say the chart has time on this side, right? And then uh, they'll have, the chart has got um, price on this side. Does this make sense? Um, and we'll just label it. So we can call it time down here. And then we'll, over here, we'll put price. Now, no matter what you trade, uh, let's just say, I don't know what you trade. Some people yell out what you trade. Go yell it out. 30 yell out what you trade. Yell it. Yes. Oh, yes. The ZB. The ZB. Come on. Are y'all on there? Oh. Come on. On the IG, tell me what you trade. Keep on, y'all. Come on. Keep telling me what you trade. The ZB. The ZB. Come on. Anybody else? Oh. Yes. Yes. Come on. Anybody else? Somebody said gold. Anybody else? NQ. NQ. The NASDAQ. Good, good, good. Anybody else? So all of that. Let's just imagine it's all, you know, Right now, what we're going to trade, we're going to trade um, iPhones, okay? We're going to trade iPhones, okay? So this is the iPhone market because it works everywhere, and I'll prove it. So we're going to work. This is the iPhone chart, and let's just say the iPhone chart has a volume profile that looks like this. A lot of participants. Not too many here, a little blip there, and then down here, a whole lot of participants. Anybody ever seen a volume chart that looks like that? Typically, they'll have like bars that kind of come out. Anybody yeah. ever seen that? Yes. They call that profiling the market, profiling the market. And you can do all kinds of things with volume. You can do volume balancing. You can do volume trading. You can do all that kind of thing. What you need to know from volume is this. Volume starts the market and volume stops the market. Somebody say volume starts the market. Volume starts, volume starts the market. And volume stops the market. Okay, good, good, good. Now, if we want to get the market started, you need volume, but volume of what? Well, volume of orders, but volume of orders doesn't necessarily tell me a direction. It just means it's a lot of people in here, but it doesn't tell me which way. You see, that was my problem with volume-based trading. I knew that if I traded a profile from the bottom when it was a lot to the top when it was a lot, then I knew I would have a trade that would basically go from about, uh, let's say like it would go from here to maybe a little pause here. And then uh, after it paused there for a little while, maybe it would keep on going and go there. And that would be volume-based trading. And you can do that and you can make a lot of money with it, but it doesn't tell you why. Even that doesn't tell you why. It just tells you where. It tells you where. Let me tell you why. Why goes like this. Inventory as a voting system, no longer in your mind as a trader or as an investor, should you think that there are buyers and sellers and people waiting to be buyers and sellers in just the market? No. There are buyers and sellers and people waiting to be buyers or sellers at every 
price. So what it will look like in volume is 1,000, right? Right over here, let's just say, for the green candles that we've drawn, what you might see is 1,000 on the volume chart. So this price, let's call it a zero, and zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So let's call this one up here 10. So we wanna trade the market of iPhones from zero to 10. Well, at zero, volume chart says 1,000, but 1,000 what? 1,000 participants. We don't know direction until we understand inventory as a voting system. Well, what are they voting about? They're voting about the value of the asset you're trading. So if you trade gold, when you're trading it, what you're trying to do is buy it for a little bit and sell it for a lot. You're trying to find a way to get the gold cheap and then sell it expensive. The same thing in the S&P, you want to see, hey, 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 who thinks that they should be buying up here? I'll sell up here against your buy and it's going to go down. I'll take your money. You see? What we have to do then is realize that it's not volume that moves the market or supply and demand or freaking un any of this other crazy stuff people are teaching you. The root of everything, Ichimoku, Elliott Waves, Fibonacci, um, Haikanashi, uh, candlestick patterns, candle um, price action patterns, cup and handle, triple tops, double bottoms. Head and shoulders, pennants, ascending wedges, descending wedges, all that stuff. Those are the fruit. The root is simple. What they say is at zero, at this price, what is happening? Well, there's a conversation. I'll buy that or not. And I'll sell that or not. That's happening at zero. And then it happens again at one. And then it happens again at two. And then it happens again at three. And you guessed it. Where does it happen again at? Four. Four. Where does it happen again at? Five. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It happens at every price. Yeah. At every price, the buyers and sellers have got to decide who's better, the five red guys or the three green guys. It is the inventory at each price that allows the people in the conversation to vote about the asset's value. That is why candles are moving. I'll explain it to you. Does, does it make sense? Does this make sense or no? Yes, or, it does make sense. Yes, it makes sense. Yes, yes, it does. Yes. Okay, cool. Now, if this is the case, then how can we prove it? How can we prove it? How can we prove it? And then after we prove it, how can we trade it? So tonight I'm going to teach you how to prove it. And then maybe tomorrow I'll teach you how to trade it. Is that cool? Uh, is that cool? Yeah. 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 yeah, that's cool. yeah that's All, right, cool. That's cool. All right, cool. Let me see. Okay. Oh, wow. I've kind of outkicked my coverage here. I have, um, why is it superior? Hold up. I'm going to share my full screen. There we go, Jay. Not the whiteboard. Why is it superior and why should it be used? I think that my method should be used over others because it teaches why. I think that my method is superior to the other methods because the other methods are as a result of mine. What I'm not doing is limiting people like Elliot did or giving arbitrary entries like Fibonacci did or making it complicated like Ichimoku did, or making it too subjective like candlestick patterns or price action does. What I'm telling you is what is happening in the market. And it happens since you were a child. I'm gonna prove it to you. When you were the crying baby and your mom was tired of you crying, she would say, she'll be all right, let her cry. She's not going to stress my nerves out. I'm going to make this bottle and she's not going to kill me about it. Because if I jump every time this baby cry, I'm going to end up jumping into a heart attack. Where my mama's at, where my mother's at. Do you know sometimes the best thing you can do as a parent is let them suffer a bit? Does this make sense? Yes. You got to realize where you should participate in that trade. 
I tell you to go to school and do well. You go to school and act a fool. Well, I'm going to come to your school and act a fool. And I'm going to do well at acting a fool. Signed, my mother and father. I got that letter every day. We pull up to the mall before we get out the car. Don't y'all go in here acting a fool. She's setting up the trade right now. We knew where the line was on the trade. We might, we might try and buy some foolishness, but we can't buy it all. Because if we buy too much of it, she's going to show sell us this tail kicking. You might be in your relationship and you might say, oh, well, I love when you write me letters and I love how you make my plate. I love that you clean up uh, around the house. But don't you ever, don't you ever in your life call me stupid. Because for some people, that makes them exit the trade. It is where and on what price event, situation, we are willing to buy and or sell and or participate that makes the market what it is. If you're a doctor, you just got out of medical school, you're about to be hired to be a doctor, you know what your starting salary should be. You know what it should be. So the reason why I believe it's superior is because it makes it simple all I need to know is where the buyers are and where the sellers are and who's going to win. All I need to know is, did the buyers lose or did the sellers lose? And then I will know what to do. This is on a high time frame, on a low time frame, on a mid time frame, on all time frame. Let me explain the inventory. It is as simple as voting for a president or a prom king or queen. Let's play the game. Let's vote for prom kings or queens. You ready? Are y'all ready? Y'all so yes. quiet. Yes, yes sir. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we are ready. Yeah. Let's do it. Yes, we yes, yes. Now. We learning how to trade. Prom king. Yeah. Votes. Uh, candidate one, candidate one got 500 votes. Candidate two got 800 votes. Who gonna win, candidate one or candidate two? Candidate two. Two. Good. They got more votes. All right then. So your price in the market then goes like this. Here is a price in the market. Let's call it the price of zero. In that market, you have 500 sellers. In that market, you also have, on that same price, you have, uh, let's call it 800 buyers. From this price, from zero, should the market go up or down? It's gonna go up. up. Inventory from lime green to a different color. What you say? I said, can you change the color from lime green to a different color? That boy say, if you gonna heal me of blindness, don't use mud, Jesus. Boy, do you care about the mud of seeing? <laughs> I just can't see it for real. My bad. <laughs> I'm just playing with you, baby. It's all love. It's all love. I don't know if I can go back and change it. I'm not that good. Let me undo, undo. And then I think me... it would go down. Why do you think it would go down? Um, because 800 is on the bottom and not on the top. Uh, well, I'm trying to label it. It's 500 sellers and then it's 800 buyers. At the same line. So yeah, it's going to go up. If at the price of zero, there are 500 sellers and 800 buyers, which direction should the market go? Up. Uh, up, because you have more uh, buyers than uh, sellers. Okay. It's a bull's let's go, market. They keep on going. Let's say they get to five. Uh, it's time for dinner. Hey, we are. All right, baby, I'll be over in one second. Let's say the next one. Is five. So here go your next price. 
We're going to consolidate. Five. I don't know what we're going to do. I'm just going to tell you how many people are at the price, and you're going to tell me where this should go up or down. At, the, at five, there are 1,000 sellers. And then there are 200 buyers. Down. So, so which down. way should the market go? Down we go. Down. 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 Now you trade. It's a bear market. <laughs> You see, now you're trading and now you know why. If, if inventory as a voting system is how candles move then, that means if I have more buyers than sellers at zero, I gotta go up. And if I have more sellers than buyers at one, I gotta go down. Now you understand concepts like consolidation. You know why it's consolidating now. You understand then concepts like trending. Because you know if it's trending to the upwards, there aren't enough sellers at these prices to stop the buyers. There are more buyers than sellers at this price. And you determine that by um, the volume? No, volume only tells you the amount of participants, but not necessarily who is overwhelming at what price. I'll teach you okay. that tomorrow. Has so this what, are we, for you? what are we looking for on the chart? Oh, we're going to have to talk some more tomorrow. Because, I mean, I can't give everything in one day. We're going to be together every night at 8 o'clock. Every night at 8. But I can't give you E. Like, if we go straight to the chart, then you don't know why I'm doing what I'm doing. Like, for you, you will say, oh, man, it just looked like he's doing some sort of magic trick. No, I'm not doing a magic trick. Because what I was going to say is, like, on the charts, I mean, you said you'll, you'll teach us that tomorrow. But what I was going to say, like, you know, each candle, how will we know if it's more, I mean, clearly off of like market structure, that's the only way to know for me, mm -hmm. but how will we know the, um, there's 500 sellers or 600 buyers mm -hmm. on that candle? Mm -hmm. on there each are candle a lot of different each tools. Candle? There are a lot of different tools. So let's talk about the history of the markets, okay? You want to talk about the history? Yeah, I mean, what else? hey, you teaching, I'm learning. I'm, I just had hey, a couple yeah. of there's a lot of stuff to talk about. Like you're, you have you ever heard traders talk and they say the tape? No, nah, I don't know. You've never heard traders say that or investors reading the tape? Anybody ever heard this? Yeah, before? we've heard it. We've yeah. heard it before. In my community, you've heard it. Yes, Anybody I heard else? it. <laughs> y'all teachers really got to start studying before they try and teach y'all. All right, cool. So the reason why you've never heard of this stuff is because. Um, Shout out to everybody who else that teaches, but like they won't do, um, they just wasn't as desperate as I was, I guess. You know, like I was really desperate. Like some of, some of them had, had other stuff to do, but I was so desperate. And then I was very, very hungry, like for knowledge. I would just sit up and sit up and sit up. So when the market was first born, there was no electricity, not in the way that we do it today with charts and bars and indicators. It was none of that. There were people who would either run an order in or people who would call an order in. Mm -hmm. The phone was such an amazing invention when it came down to the financial markets because you can be reading a paper in Chicago and call your broker in New York and tell him to buy some shares or sell some shares. Well, when the buying and the selling, when the market first started, it was just a person. It was typically a young boy and he had a board and there was chalk and he would write down who was buying what and how much. It would be written down. The technology came along that soon it would be automated so that it would be written and then in a machine and the machine would feed through very small white paper and they would call it the tape. And you could see the buyers and the sellers on the tape. The tape has been transformed now where it looks like a dome. Anybody trades on domes? Come on, anybody trade on domes before? Yeah, like an order dome. Yeah, I've like an order game. dome. Yeah, yeah a, a dome is an acronym that stands for depth of market. And if you trade on jigsaw 
or even if you use Ninja or Summer Trading View, you can see like, uh, it looks like a column, like a four column system. And then Better Domes, it might be an eight column, column system. And in the two middle co um, columns are the prices, like whatever you're trading, that's the price of it. I mean, in the center column was the prices and uh, on the columns outside of that, it would be uh, the buyers and the sellers. Anybody ever seen this before? Yeah, I've seen it. Okay, cool, yeah. cool, cool. Let me, let me see if I can show one to you. No. So, not everybody no, knows. The uh, Superdome. So here, and let's go uh, yeah, Dome and Trading. Hey, baby. Yep. I'm coming in a second. Okay, bring me one. I'll, I'll get it this is a dome. You see the prices in the middle, and then you have um, buyers and sellers on each side. Y'all see that? Somebody is playing a whole song. Okay, so this actually yeah, looks it. easier to understand. What you say? This actually looks easier to understand. So they don't use these anymore, or they do still use People this. use them. But this is what the tape looked like before it was the tape. Like there was, there was a guy writing on a chalkboard, typically a boy. Then there was the tape. And then the tape then turned into the dome. And what the dome would do is let you see the buyers and the sellers at different prices. So for example, you can see the volume of bids. Y'all know bid is for buyers and ask is for sellers. So you can see price and then you would see that at this price, say for example, 121.60, there is 2.602K uh, people that wanna sell. That's the volume of sellers at that price. And then that's the volume of buyers. Thank you, baby. I appreciate it. My, my daughter's making me dinner. I'm a blessed man. Y'all mind if I eat a little bit while I uh, teach a little bit? Praise God, I'm glad. So you see, that's what domes did. It wasn't until the rice market that candlesticks were born. Candlesticks didn't even come about a candlestick chart didn't happen until there was a trader and he wanted to understand the rice market. He's a Chinese dude. Um, let me, I can't remember his name. Birth of candlestick chart. It, the first time it was ever used was um, um, in a rice market. Uh, candlestick charts thought have been developed in the 18th century by Moon Hisa Homa, a Japanese rice trader. They weren't even introduced too much later. You see? So Drew, you asked me what's going on with it. And that's kind of where I got to. Now here's some questions that helped me understand what was happening. What happens to the price of an item when it's in high demand? Does it go up or down? If oh. everybody wants this, does the price go up or down? It goes up. Now. No. It goes up. It goes up. Yes. If everybody wants an Xbox, then they buy out all the inventory. I'm going to tell you how it goes. <laughs> it, I mean, it's, you got to think about it like this. Everybody want to buy houses. Let's just say there are 20 buyers in one house. It's one house to sell and 20 buyers, one seller, 20 buyers. They're gonna bid. The first buyer come to the door, <laughs> I'll buy it. The seller say, how much you gonna offer? I'll offer you a million. He says, okay, I'll wait. The second buyer comes up, I want it bad enough. If he want it bad enough, what he gotta do? He Pay gotta more. be higher than a million. Give a higher bid. price. The other person. So what happens to the price of items if they are in high demand? Do they go up or down? They go up. Like no, I said. Uh, That's what happens. I'm going to tell you, on the 3rd of July, fireworks are expensive. On the 7th of July, fireworks are not expensive. You okay. can go to the corner of the store and you can buy that same little firework and it's going to cost you a dollar. Three days ago, it cost you $45. Yeah, same. just like fans and AC, they go up in the summer. Exactly. The price of an item in high demand, when there are a lot of buyers, the price goes up. 
The question my method answers is what actually makes markets work? The conversation and in inventory as a voting system is how they work. Everything is happening because of that. The reason why the market goes up creates a pennant and does this is because of the conversation. The buyers sent it up, the sellers sent it down, and then the buyers from a higher level continue to buy. It explains why the candles are moving. None of the other methods explain that. No one even said, why are they moving? It explained who's in the market. Most of y'all thought that before tonight, you only thought that buyers and sellers was in it. You didn't know people was waiting around window shopping. And my method also explains where they are, how to find them. I'm gonna teach you that one tomorrow, okay? I'm gonna teach you one way to find them. Was this good tonight? Did you all enjoy yourselves? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Very very much. Much. yes. Was it informative? Great job, man. Yes. 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 My girl, yes. Shaquan Lopez is yes, on sir. here. First. Did you all, everybody enjoyed that? Yes. Awesome, yes. Are there any questions? Yes. Jay Harris, you can speak now. You got some questions. Go ahead. I was one. I was going to ask. Is that that's just active trader, right? Who? What you just showed us. That's called active trader, correct? No, that ain't active. Tra What's active trader? He just teaching us the basics right now. I'm gonna look up active trader because I don't know. But I've never heard of active trader. He's probably talking about people who day trade. So th yeah, this doesn't look like it worked for a long-term trade, right? No, no yeah. Trade. So the the little like where it shows like the amount of orders on each side, the name of that is called active trader, if I'm not mistaken. Um active trader. Is no, it it's called a chain? dome. It's called a dome. A lot of people make platforms where they trade on domes. Maybe Active Trader does. The best dome company that trades for me, there's a company called Jigsaw. Jigsaw has the best depth of market type of chart trading that you can ever find. I'll show it to you so you can see. Jigsaw Trading is the name of the company. Let me share my screen. Can't we tell by the options chain too? The options chain, not really. This is a this is a jigsaw dome over here. You see how much more thorough it is, how many more areas you have to look at. When I first started trading with jigsaw domes is when I first heard about, <laughs> yeah, I'm eating, baby. <laughs> My wife said, he eating, y'all? Yeah, I'm eating. Eight. The girls made me a corn dog, sweetheart. Um, but when I first started trading with domes, I started with Ninja. And then, because Ninja has a super dome, they have a dome, then they had a super dome on Ninja 7. And then I started getting into dome based trading, and the domes were showing me a uh, volume. Then I got into Jigsaw. I bought the Jigsaw software and downloaded it. And I, I spent maybe six or eight months trading on just a dome, learning how to read it. And Jigsaw really did open a lot of things up because. It showed me the waiting people. It also showed me this thing called iceberg orders. Anybody ever heard of iceberg orders? Yes. Yeah, it showed me, that was the first time I ever heard of an iceberg order. Huh? Good, good, good. Any other questions? What about level three trading? Is, is that? What about level three? What about it? Do you like it? Do you not like it? Are you, talking about, the, are you talking about data, like level one, level two data? Yeah. Does that teach you um, how to find, you know, the sellers and the buyers? They're, <laughs> what? There's a level three trading data now? Never mind. Who's selling I probably, it? I probably didn't get the term right. What is level three data? What is a level three quote? A level three quote is pricing information about a security provided by the trading service. It includes real-time bid price, ask price, but that's just level one, level two. The live data, 
Uh, level three data provides even deeper information than L2 and L3. Level three, uh, level three data refers to non-aggregated bids. Okay, non-aggregated bids in place. So what they're doing, I guess what they're calling level three is the outside of the, the thing on Jigsaw. So let me show you Jigsaw again. Uh, or let call, let's say this is uh, level one data on a regular dome, okay? You have price in the middle, you have the bid and the sell volume. I show you the screen, Jay. Okay. You can do that. Yeah. Okay, y'all can see my screen, say yes or no. Yes, sir. Okay, yes. so you see how in the middle, this is price and on either side, you can see the level volume, right? You can see what was there. Now, this is the definition. According to what is level three tick data, level, level three data refers to non-aggregated bids. So that is bids that have not yet necessarily, excuse me, non-level bid and as placed by individual market makers, okay? Let me show you Jigsaw again. Uh, jig saw trading dome. Where's a good one? This is a good one. And I wish I could make it big. Can I save this image as? Save this image as image three. It's a web file. And save it as like a, a JPEG, my boy. Let me see if I can click on it and make it real big. Okay, cool. Here's real time order flow. Anybody ever heard of order flow? When I first start uh, even understanding trading, the platform that I first saw it on was a platform called order flow analytics. Old platform. I don't even know if they still make it. Let me see if I can get it open here. Okay. Let's see if you can open and paint. Open it. Oh, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. All right, let's see if I can make this bigger. No, I can't. What can I zoom, view, and then what do I do like this? Full screen. Oh, that's ugly. I want to see it bigger, bro. I think we can zoom in on our thing either way. Oh, you know what? Look, I can do that. Okay, cool. I can do that. Okay, so now you guys, you see the dome. In the middle, you see how on uh, the middle is price. So you see price right here, right? In the middle in black. Then yes. you can see that there's a 21 blue than a 124 blue. You see how there's more than just the price and then the, the bid and the ask, like in the other chart over here. Let me see if I go back one. I'll go back two. Like that. You see how it's just the price and then the bid and the ask? Well, what Jigsaw did for me was show me that there was the price the bid and the ask volume, and then there was non-aggregated prices too. What this showed me was how people would set traps for one another. You want me to show you how they do it? Yeah. I know y'all are like, man. Yes, sir. I'm trying to show you how to yes, do it. Yes, sir. Imagine, shows, shows. you know, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like going to South Beach for spring break. You meet a girl, she says she likes you. She says, oh my God, I can't get enough of you. You need to come to my room right now. I cannot wait. So you follow her to the room. You tell, hey, y'all, hey, but, hey, y'all, I'm gone. I'm gonna go to the room. When you get to the room, you walk inside the room and when you walk in and close the door, it's five dudes in there. You getting beat up, stumped up, and you getting robbed. What she did was show you a little leg, get you to really bite. And then you now you way ahead of where the market is going only to find out that it's a trap. So if you ever heard of a bull trap or a bear trap, the way they set them on domes is through the third column. You see this column over here, you can put a big number. So imagine someone says the market is trading 92, 92, 92. And then someone says, well, I wanna buy, I'm gonna buy a million shares, but I wanna buy my shares at, um, I'm gonna buy them at 62. So instead of him buying up here, like you see there's a big number down here, this big 3000 number. Let me see if I can zoom in on it. Cause I've gotten beat like this before. I want y'all to get beat. So you see how there's a 3000 number real big right here. You get like 124, 200, 600, 300, 300, 300, 300. Then right here, you see it's 3000. So much volume down there. So the market goes down because that person put in an order to do something. The order had to be 
filled, but everybody can see that that's where he's going to buy. So everybody rushes down there to buy with him. And right before price goes in, he pulls the order. So his order never gets filled. He says, I'll buy 3,000 shares or 3 million shares at 62. Price starts going 92, 82, 72, 68, 66. He calls the broker. He says, pull it. When he pulls the order, he takes the orders and puts them on top. And now he puts the sell order above. So now everybody who was jumping in to buy where he is, now they got a face full of him. They're on the wrong side. And he trapped the market down there. And now everybody's going to be stuck. He's going to keep pushing it down. Um, is that, that sounds wrong for people to do that. Is that illegal? No, that's not illegal. That's very legal. They do it all the time. They do it to you. If you want to go to a concert, um, somebody, the promoter of the concert sells the tickets. Well, he sells them to whoever will buy them. Some of them going to American Airlines, some going to American Express, some go to Delta, some of them go to Visa, some of them go to Ticketmaster, some of them go to StubHub. And then what do all those people do? All those people sell them to you. They buy the inventory cheap and sell it to you for more. You know what else they can do? This is what 50 Cent did to Ja Rule one time. 50 Cent went to Ja Rule's concert. I think my camera died. Hold on one second. 50 Cent went to Ja Rule's concert and went to the uh, where the boy was selling his tickets and bought all of the tickets for the floor. This is what 50 Cent did now. 50 Cent went and bought all the tickets to the floor. So Ja Rule is doing a show and nobody's in it. Ain't no fans. Because 50 bought all the tickets. If you want to, you can control the inventory if you have enough size. If there are only 1 million iPhones coming out tomorrow and you cut a deal to buy 1 million of them, you control the iPhone market. And there is nothing illegal about that because iPhone just wanted to sell them all for $500. You came in the first day and say, I buy every one of them you got for $500. So iPhone says, great, we just sold out of iPhones. Boom. And guess what the iPhone man, what the guy who now controls all the iPhone says? iPhone starting at $1,200. So he know he's going to make $700 every time he sell a phone. He controls the inventory, so he controls the market. Does this make sense now? Yes, thank you for that. That's how you do it. That's how you control. You can't control the market with money. You control the market with inventory. If I wanted to be the only man that can sell cameras, all I have to do is buy them all. If I wanted to be the only person who can sell diamonds, then all I would have to do is control diamond production. Then I can, I can sell them for whatever price I want to. You have to control the inventory to control a market. Okay? And no, it's not illegal. People do it every day. You fake like you was going to like that dude. So you say, ooh, ooh, you can have my number. But all you really wanted was him for him to take you to dinner for a free meal. So you ate his food and enjoyed it. Then you say, ooh, I got to go. My friend got to take me. You lied to him. You put a lot of bids where he thought he could. You put a lot of uh, bids where he was selling. Oh, man, I'm selling her my attention. I'm selling her this great night out. I'm selling all this. You put all the bids right there. He thought you was going to buy. You pull the inventory. You pull the attention. The trade went bad for him. You tricked him. That happens every day. Does this make sense? Yes, yes, sir. I'm telling you, and it happens every day. Yes, it does. It happens every day. Every day. Every day. In every market you can imagine. People say, hey, 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 man. Hey, hey, hey don't sell that. I'm going to buy them all. I'm going to buy them all from you. I'm going to buy them all from you. The whole time they're making their own. Don't sell it. Don't sell it. Let's, you know, I'm going to buy them all from you. Next thing you know, they selling them. And you waited on them. Hey, man, I thought you was going to buy mine. No, he just wanted to see yours so he can remake it. And now he's selling them. You see what I'm saying? It happens every day. It happens every day. Man, I hope you all enjoyed this. We got a chance to kind of geek out over markets a little bit. I know the trading and the conversation went kind of long, but I'm glad you all decided to stay. All of you all are amazing to me. Did you all have a good time in here? Did you learn something? Was it good for you? Are you glad you came? 
Yes. 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 Yeah, yes, be definitely. Yes. Yes. I'll be here. Yes. I'll be here. Do me a favor. When you come back, invite somebody to come with you. Because, you, you know, people are, uh, they're misinformed about what's happening in the market. And they need good information. They really do. Everybody here wants to do something better. We all don't want money. We want something money's going to give us. None of us necessarily said we want to be traders. We just trading and investing so that we can. I'm trading so that I can pay off my house. I'm investing so that I can retire my wife. I'm investing so that I can retire my husband. I'm trading so that I can pay off this car. That's why we're doing it. Look all around. Go to the, um, to the participants and read some of the names. That's why we're doing it. We just want to serve people. I'm doing it so I can be the, the last Mosley to ever have to struggle. I'm doing it so I can be the last Oliver that ever has to worry about trying to take out a loan. I'm going to do a family bank, and I need to fund this family bank. Thank you, Kingdom Influence. Thank you, Chris1189. I'm glad you all enjoyed it. That's what this is about. And I, I, I want you to realize everybody's the same. Terry students and Tay's students and... Uh, call me 100K students and my students and me and Terry and Tay and everybody. We're all the same. We just want to do better. We want to do better than our mom and them, better than, you know, my grandma and them. We want to do it. I love that V means to an end. It's just a means to an end. Everybody deserves that. Do me a favor. You see how I know this stuff, but I didn't keep it to myself? Now, this stuff that what I'm just teaching you, that's how markets work. You could take it and you could trade it on anything that's a market. Anything. This works everywhere. I'm going to technically get into it tomorrow. I'm going to pull up some charts, but I had to walk you through. But this thing works everywhere. This method works everywhere. And I freely gave it. I didn't say you have to pay me no money. Did I was I? about to say, I respect how you're doing this without a price because now it sounds out of 10 people charging like, oh, $1,000 or, you know, whatever they price. Well, there's the always price. more. I have a course. It's $5,000. Don't get me twisted. I got but a course. about the people that can't afford that? <laughs> well, look at them. I'm here serving them too. Now, this What's is that? the basic. For me, this is the basics of what I teach. My What's basic... That? Listen to me a second. My basics are better than most people's 5,000, 15,000, 20,000. These are my basics. This is my, hey, little kids, let me teach you how markets work. This is this. This is the kindergarten of my stuff. But my kindergarten is everybody else's PhD course. Now, let's be honest. I am going to separate myself from people who call themselves educators like me. In a little while, no one will be able to say they do what I do. And this is how it's going to go. I'm going to teach it. I'm going to teach it in front of your face. I'm going to do it in front of your face. And I'm going to dare you to go bring somebody and show them what I'm teaching them. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to dare you to do. I dare you. Because tomorrow, we're going to keep going. And the day after that, and the day after that, every, every day of this month at 8 o'clock, I'm teaching. I dare you to bring somebody. What's your course you. about? Is it the bonds course? My course is about how markets work so that you can trade anything. Tay, who's a great options trader, said, show me that. When I showed him what I showed you all uh, tonight, he said, oh, my God, I'm going to make so much money with this. The first week that I showed him this, he took $30,000, I think, and made a quarter million dollars in five days. Ain't lying. You call him and see. I got the pictures. No, you ain't lying. I'm his student, and uh, that's what he said in, in the course, and, and uh, that's why I'm here. I'm telling you what it is. What I'm doing, nobody else knows. They've all been studying the stuff on YouTube. 
Nah, don't get it twisted now. You two got some good information. <laughs> yeah, but it ain't this. Would you recommend, even if taking your course, to just further do more research in and educating ourselves? Or yeah. is your $5,000 course it and we don't need to go nowhere else? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to be honest. I love knowledge. I go chase it. I run around and go get it. I love it. But wisdom is different from that. Stella, I ain't gonna lie, man. After studying all that stuff, I realized that there was an easier, more acceptable, more simpler way. And as I said on my stories today with my wife, it was more powerfuler. <laughs> I told my wife, it's more powerfuler. It's just more powerful. Why would I waste my why would I waste my attention, my time, and my resources on something that is the fruit if I can just learn the root and get it done? Like, say, for example, I wanted to, uh, say, for example, I like, you know, I love Angelica, right? Like, that's my wife. I love my wife. Everybody, I, I mean, she's amazing. But say, like, what I did, I bought her flowers, and I bought her a car, and I bought her a house, and I bought her all these cool things, and then, you know, um, I did all that stuff. That ain't really what she do though. That's not how my wife sees love. My wife sees love in kindness. If you offer her money and things like that, that stuff is cool, but that ain't the root for her. The root for my wife is being kind. I mean, you gotta be J too, but I mean, being kind is what it is. So when I got to the market, you know, I could waste my time with every indicator in the world and I have volume, order flow analysis, um, the order flow chart, the GOMI, um, EMAs, MACDs, RSIs, um, volume profiling, volume, I've done pivots, uh, swings, um, all of that, man, I've done them all. You can go and do it, but I'm gonna tell you what tends to happen with me. People come to me, then they go all around the world learning and they spend a lot of money on expensive things. And then they say, Jay, I came back, man. Show me this stuff, cause this is really what it is. Is your and course I, on Teachable, Jay? My course, I have a course in Teachable. Yeah, it's called Become a Money Machine. I don't want it. I don't want that to be the focus of this. That's not this. This is me saying I'm here to serve. Thirty days, in and out, questions and answers, real picking up charts, real methodologies, real training, real psychology. If you want to buy a course, we could talk about that way later. Right now, we're talking about can you help? Yes, Jay. I think I can help. Well, how you gonna help then, Jay? Well, turn on them lights, turn on them computers you done bought and turn on some of these cameras and let's start teaching. Because rappers rap, sing a sing, and teachers teach. So by the time you're done teaching us, we'll be able to get on the charts and basically know what we're doing. Well, you can do that tonight. What you talking about by the time I'm done? By the time I'm done, you'll realize that I'm the best that you've ever seen at the end no, of these no. 30 days. No, that's no, what I'm, I'm trying to establish. Like I'm saying basically within this 30 days, like- um, Let me get, let me give you a link. You, I, can, I can feel you, you want a link. And what I'm doing right now in these 30 days, I'm not even the driver. I'm the passenger. I'm gonna answer the question. I'm gonna just, wherever y'all wanna go is where we gonna go. I'm just gonna keep sharing things that have helped me. I'm gonna talk about cockroaches and clouds. I'm gonna talk about the rain and I'm gonna talk about waves and I'm gonna talk about candles and patterns and I'm gonna talk about mentality. I'm gonna talk about common vocabulary. It's use and misuse. I'm gonna talk about indicators, how they should properly be used and how they are improperly used. I'm gonna talk about all kinds of stuff. I'm just gonna answer your question because I don't want people to suffer no more. I don't, I don't want that at all anymore. I want people to do good. I want them to understand the market. I don't want the market to whoop nobody up no more. It's been whooping a lot of, anybody ever lost a lot of money in the market? Say yes or put it in the chat. Yes. Now how I look yes. sitting at my house where I don't have to lose and I know you and you know me and you losing. Least I can do is give you, like that. there's a, a scripture in the Bible where this woman breaks in on Jesus and um, she say, I need a healing, I need a healing, I need something. And uh, Jesus 